and our momentum is 30 kilogram meter per second to the right. Now we need to include the direction to the right because momentum is a vector quantity. As discussed, a vector quantity means it's direction specific. So we need to indicate the direction. Any object with momentum is going to be hard to stop. To stop such an object, it is necessary to apply a force against its motion for a given period of time. The more momentum that an object has, the harder that it is to stop. Thus, it would require a greater amount of force or a longer amount to bring such an object to stop. Example for this is when a car approaches a red signal traffic light, the driver uses the brake to change the momentum of a vehicle, causing it to slow down and eventually stop. Another example below shows a change in momentum for both the truck and the car. As you may observe, the truck after the collision stops while the cars move in an opposite direction. This scenario becomes possible because of the force of collision for both the truck and the car. In conclusion, an unbalanced force always accelerates an object, either speeding it up or slowing it down. Now, impulse is actually observed in both scenarios. And as mentioned earlier, impulse requires force and time. Therefore, impulse is equal to a change in momentum. And in order to change momentum, force is needed in a specific period of time. Therefore, we can say that impulse is equal to force times time is equal to mass times change in velocity. The letter I represents impulse, and the basic unit of impulse is kilogram meter per second or newton second. Now we are ready to solve for problem solving related to impulse. For our first problem, Jennifer, who has a mass of 50 kilograms, is driving at 35 meters per second in a red sports car. And she must suddenly slow on the brakes to avoid hitting the deer crossing the road. She strikes the airbag that brings her body to a stop in 0.5 seconds. What average force does the support exert on her? Now, what is uh, given on the problem is simply the mass of Jennifer and the velocity uh, of the red sports car before it came to a stop and the time of the car to stop is 0.5 seconds now what is the mass of problems obviously the force of the seatbelt exerts on gender now as we all know on the earliest the lesson that impulse is equal to force times time is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. To uh, find what is the mass in the problem, we need to find force and to simplify the previous uh, formula of impulse, uh, we can have it as force is equal to mass times change in velocity over time. And as we all know that the change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus initial velocity. So let's simply substitute. Again, we're looking for the force of the support exerts towards Jennifer as she tried to stop the red sports car to avoid bumming into uh, a deer. So force is equal to the mass of Jennifer, that's 50 kilogram times the change in velocity, which is 35 meter per second, over time, which is 0.5 seconds. And then we 
you simply multiply mass times the change in velocity divided by the time. So that will bring us to 3,500 newton. So this is actually the force of that seat belt towards Jennifer. Now for our second problem, what is the impulse caused by an average force of 10 newtons if it acts on a log for 2 seconds? The impulse here can be calculated as force times time. We have the force which is 10 newtons and we have the time bring us to 20 newton seconds. Collision and momentum. Collision is defined as an encounter between two objects resulting in exchange of impulse and momentum. If we take the colliding bodies as one system, the momentum of the system is therefore approximately conserved. In an isolated system, the total momentum of the system before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the system after the collision. The principle of conservation of momentum is a direct consequence of Newton's third law of motion, which states that for two or more bodies in an isolated system acting upon each other, their total momentum remains constant unless an external force is applied. Therefore, momentum can neither be created nor destroyed. With the concept mentioned, we can derive to this equation. Total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. Now, collision are, collisions are categorized according to whether the total kinetic energy of the system changes. Kinetic energy belongs to during collision. However, we need to keep in mind momentum is always conserved in collision, and the total energy may or may not be so, Now, given these two pictures, which do you think is elastic collision or inelastic collision? That's right. The first picture is an example of elastic collision, which defined as Total kinetic energy of the system does not change, and colliding objects bounce off after collision. While inelastic collision is one which the total kinetic energy of the system changes, an example converted to some other forms of energy. Objects that stick together after collision is said to be perfectly inelastic. Now let's take a look at our example for inelastic collision. If you happen to be on this car, what are ways you do every day to protect your life? And do you think car manufacturers develop certain ways to protect drivers from intense trauma due to accident? That's right. By always wearing your seatbelt, it will protect you from being hurt if the car might collide or will apply strong force to stop. Also, the use of airbags in automobiles minimize the effect of the force of an object involved in a collision. Airbags accomplish this by extending the time required to stop the momentum of the driver and passenger. To apply the principle of conservation of momentum, let's answer the problem. Two ice skaters stand together. They push off and travel directly away from each other. The boy with a speed of 0.50 meter per second and the girl with a speed of 0.65 meter per second. If the mass of the boy is 60 kilograms, what is the girl's mass? Consider the ice to be frictionless. Now for our solution, the momentum of the boy girl system is conserved. Their 
there is no change in the momentum of the system before and after the push off. So for our given, we have we have uh, the mass of the boy, which is 60 kilogram, and for the mass of the girl, this is actually unknown. We have the velocity given for, for both the boy and the girl. So applying the concept of uh, conservation of momentum, again, we can say that the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. So the total Every day we commute to reach our destination. It may be going to work, school, or supermarket. And with that, we always try our best to be very careful. Now let's take a closer look at this scenario. Both cars bump into the wall. For case A, after the collision, the car rebounds and encounters a change in velocity of 9 meters per second. While on case B, after the collision, the car didn't rebound thus encounters a velocity change of 5 meters per second. Now with this scenario, we can say that the rebound is characterized by a large velocity and momentum change. And for case A, it has a large velocity and a greater momentum change. Now, given the scenario based on your opinion, which would be more damaging to the driver of the automobile? Is it the rebounding of the car uh, or the crumpling of the cars? Now, the crumpling up of cars is the safest type of automobile collision. As mentioned above, if cars rebound upon collision, the momentum change will be larger and so will the impulse. A greater impulse will typically be associated with a bigger force. Occupants of automobiles would certainly prefer small forces upon their bodies during collision to avoid internal trauma. In fact, automobile safety engineers have found ways to reduce the harm by designing cars that crumple upon the impact. So this is actually the crumple zones for the cars. This side here and this side here. So crumple zones are sections in cars that are designed to crumple up when the car encounters a collision. So the crumple zones minimize the effect of the force in automobile collision in two ways. By crumpling, the car is less likely to rebound upon impact, thus minimizing the momentum change and the impulse. Finally, the crumpling of the car lengthens the time over which the car's momentum is changed. By increasing the time of the collision, the force of the collision is greatly reduced.